Shaki, the kind of chocolate chunk, a month long, a snark of Afrin Shannon. Kui Bono, to whose benefit? Why a country that is so resistant to change, where there are so many institutional vetoes in change, of all the reforms, at all the times, and the history of the state, is this one being advanced? Kui Bono, to whose benefit? Ladies and gentlemen, I will put it to you that the reason it's coming now is that a confluence of vested interests have decided that it is to their benefit that at this stage we should not try and perform the incredibly necessary overdue fundamental reform of our Iraqis and our system of government, but rather should use the extinction of the Shannon as a smokescreen. Ladies and gentlemen, the process of government in this country is broken, the process of governance is broken. The evidence is all around us. The ruins and tatters that our economy is in were not just due to the actions of bankers and property developers, but they were also due to the actions of government. Bankers and property developers acted often unethically, often incompetently, sometimes criminally, but always rationally. They acted in their self-interest. They knew what their rewards were. If they gave unsustainable loans, if they built unnecessary houses, they'd get paid for it. The purpose of government was to rein in that natural exuberance of, of self-interest on our behalf. And the principal failure, the principal reason why we're in a mess we're in, is a failure of governance. Why? Well, I think the reasons are very simple. Instead of having national leadership in a national parliament, what we have in our goal is 44 local elections. We get a series of local reps whose principal curriculum V they either to get elected is their track record in helping their constituents deal with the Byzantine ways of the bureaucracy of our state. In return, they get an acknowledgement that in election time that they have achieved something, something they can show for it, and they get votes. So ladies and gentlemen, I will put it to you that it suits the political class not to perform the necessary reforms and with great respect to, to Senator Nocton, the reforms that have been advanced are purely cosmetic and insubstantial. We have TDs who have no parliamentary role. All they have to do is turn up and vote and do what they're told. The best evidence for this comes from the current situation in our, in, our, in our government elections. Who is your bitterest rival if you're running for the door? You would think it would be the person who was from the opposing party, whose position was most ideologically, intellectually, philosophically, and politically the opposite of yours. No. As Senator Nocton will find out very soon, your bitterest opponent when you run for the door is the guy or the girl in your own party who's looking for the same slice of the core vote, even though they're supposed to have the same principles, the same aspirations, the same dreams and goals of the country. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the problem. So what are the skills that we end up with in our door? We end up with people who are skillfully adroit at negotiating a local party organization, aided in approximately one third of cases by the appropriate gene problem. If they get past that organization, they can then find themselves tapping into a core vote with a better than even chance of getting elected. This does not give you a functioning parliament, and our members are then precluded from thinking. I once said we could replace our elections with sheepdog trials. All they need to do is to be able to herd them in, under the whip, into the right uh, lobby at voting time. Thinking, as we've seen recently, is one of the few sackable offences in Irish politics. <laughs> What should be a testing ground for new blood and new ideas has instead become some kind of a bizarre anti-Darwinian survival, anti-evolutionary lab, where people who change the least, who keep their head down the lowest, are the ones who survive. And with great respect to our Prime Minister and Taoiseach, Andy Kenny, one would have to say that his relatively honourable, but entirely undistinguished third of the century in Fine Gael, and which he achieved nothing until he became the teacher of the country, is the best evidence that this is the way to advance. There is no spontaneity in our door, no spontaneity of decision making. You will probably find out when you get elected. The whips decide who speaks, on what they speak, and for how long they speak. This is what happens. We then have a situation where the four men, of the Economic Management Council, the three teachers in the union rep, and they make all the decisions, tell the groups what to do, and they ultimately are told by them what to do. This enforces complete orthodoxy, party orthodoxy, and it totally diminishes parliamentary accountability. There's no reward, there's no punishment for bad judgment, and have we had bad judgment in our politics and in our teaching? We certainly have. Then I have a problem.
person after person after person. And Master House said, I'm going into this lobby gripping my teeth. I don't want to vote this way, but I have to. By the way, I'm trying to say I voted against. If this comes through, if the shadow is abolished, the only mechanism for challenging the authority of the central government will be for people to go and mount a Supreme Court challenge. There will be no other state structure to protect us from the actions of bad teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, would it be the opinion of this House that this country has suffered from the actions of bad teaching in the last decade and a half? I would put it to you that it is self-evident that we have. We will lose all accountability for this. If Enda is sincere about political reform, he needs to increase accountability, not to decrease it. Instead, he's removing the shadow, which is a very imperfect form of oversight, but some oversight. And at a swipe, is removing the ability of Uttara Nehru, the president, to oversee any executive function of the legislative process other than challenging a law on the basis of its constitutionality. That, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the things that Hayden Garner and her team want you to vote against. Specifically because the 1922 Free State Charter acted, acted with a certain rugged independence, the devil would in the changes he made in 1937 to defang it. In the post shannon abolition aftermath, a temporary draw majority can remove the controller and auditor general, can remove any member of the judiciary, and can remove the ombudsman. Ladies and gentlemen, the question stands, who we vote on to whose benefit? Who actually wants this? And I would put it in that is the executive and the civil service. What about ministerial appointments? We have, and I, God, I get terrified when I hear they want to shrink the size of the door. I keep saying, you mean you want to have an even shallower pool of talent to pick the ministers from than we have right now? <laughs> I'm not sure if you take a bunch of it out. At present, what do we have? The country's being run by three teachers in the union room. What about my own area of health? The current minister actually had a bit of experience and has, I think, some qualifications for the job. His three predecessors, between them, had four years' experience in the workforce, not in health, in any part of the workforce before they became full-time politicians. Two were teachers for less than one school year. One was a family uh, lawyer for approximately two years. So why was there a shadow? The intent of the shadow was that, unlike the door, it would not be local, it would be national. Unlike the door, it would not be full-time political, it would be vocational and expert. It would bring a different skill set into the House of Parliament. It has failed on both scores. Why? Is it failed because of the shadow? Should the shadow be punished for some failure? No. It's failed because successive governments yeah, yeah. subverted our constitution. <laughs> much cliched incubator and nursing home for a failed and aspirant, real and imaginary Doral careers. It is their fault. They've turned it into a what talking shop. But despite that, the current shadow alone has brought in 500 amendments. Now some will argue that these were government amendments. Um, it rhymes with tronics, what I want to say there. The reality is that most of those amendments were brought in by members of the opposition or members of the shadow, and they were then, because that's the way government works, they don't like giving credit for anything. They will vote down your amendment, change a word or two in it, and bring it in themselves. But there were 500 substantive changes. As well as that, this is the only forum that brings people resident in Northern Ireland into a process of Parliament, and is the only forum, I believe, for some people who would not be pop easily popularly electable can have some role with people like perhaps Yates in his time and David Norris. So while it is, as I said in my own election leaflet, an affront to democracy, so is the doll. They're both affronts to democracy. If it's abolished, will we have more of a national and less of a local focus? No. Will we have more accountability? No. Will we save money? No. Parenthetically, let me say that this 20 million figure plucked from the air, and those who read the Anglo text would know this is one of the cleaner places that sums of money have been plucked out of uh, over the last year, uh, will know that it's completely making money. The figure is 5.9 million, okay? 5.9 million, and we've heard from Minister Howland, the minister responsible for saving money for the state of the money will be spent on bail committees. It's not going to be spent on cancer drugs, or special needs assistance, or on better facilities in education. We've heard from the chairman of Fine Gael, Charlie Flanagan, that it's going to be used, part of it is going to be used to finance it into a legal office. We have heard also from John Paul Thieler, who I debated against in London last week, a Fine Gael TD, that the figure is completely erroneous. So, what about Enda's arguments as to why we should abolish it? He said that... Go ahead. 
I want to try to move there. Sorry about that. You know what? I've been eventually get one of those, but not in this chamber. Um, I will finish by saying that the arguments advanced by the tea shop that the um, that the Shannon was a fraud for the Celtic Tory was pretty rich coming from a guy who voted for the bank guarantee and for a guy who actually at the height of the Celtic Tiger advocated reducing stamp duty on houses. The argument that it failed to reform itself was pretty rich coming from a guy who's been in there for one half of the 75 years that the Shannon has existed and the county has been a TV. How many reform bills did he bring in? I was in the place a year and a half and I wrote in one reform bill which has passed two stages of parliamentary process which is one more bill and two more stages than he did in 38 years. So ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't hold water either. So I'll finish just by saying a few words and I'm afraid what our Sinn Féin colleagues say because they've got from the position of, of abolishing to reforming to abolishing and I can only say it's gone from a little bit to a chucky old law to Harley Law, to Rocky Law, to Ken Lawhead. <laughs>